Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here with a very special guest to talk about a very cool topic, AI and the future, the tech industry, the world, everything in one. Let's see how much we can squeeze into half an hour. We are here with Ariel, who is the co-founder and CEO of Ironhack. Ariel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Ellie. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, big topic indeed. Um, things are moving really fast, so hopefully we can share some interesting insights and uh, maybe learn together. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully nothing huge changes by the time we finish this conversation and it's already outdated. I don't know. It's going to be tough. <laughs> we'll try and keep up. Uh, so, well, to start off, I want to address the elephant in the room. And probably this is a question that future generations are going to laugh at us for asking, but we have to start here anyway. Are we all about to be replaced by robots? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, the end is nigh. <laughs> yeah, listen, we're we're in the very early stages of this um, AI revolution, specifically uh, Gen AI. And while it's true that we can anticipate more tasks being automated by uh, robots, machines, AI, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, the reality is, is that most of the use cases in applications that we're seeing today are really about uh, augmenting the potential of humans, um, not really entirely displacing them, right? Um, speaking in general terms. I think it's gonna be really hard in, in the short to medium term to uh, replace the creativity uh, the intuition, um, the problem solving skills, the empathy that human beings bring to the table. So uh, I'm not particularly concerned anytime soon. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like um, the, yeah, being scared of AI and uh, the tools that we've been handed. It's similar to, I imagine when the printing press arrived, if anyone was scared of the printing press, like, oh no, it's gonna take our jobs. Like how ridiculous. Or even when the internet came along, like the old fuddy duddies going, no, I'm going to, I'm not gonna look anything up on Google. I'm gonna stay in the library referencing by hand. I imagine like it's that kind of, that's the hesitation that we're seeing. Totally, you know, I've um, been brushing up on some uh, history books um, and it was interesting to find that dating back to uh, the 1930s, right, almost 100 years ago, we're already talking about this concept of technological unemployment, right, which uh, was this um, concept and fear that uh, machines and technology would uh, entirely displace humans and create, uh, as a result, unemployment, right? And obviously, a lot of things have happened in the last 100 years, right? And I think it's uh, hard to argue that, right, that uh, there are less jobs today, right, than, you know, uh, in the early uh, 20th century. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so, well, segues to my next question very nicely about history. So what can we learn from history repeating itself? Because uh, although the tech and the things that we're seeing come out of it with AI are kind of unprecedented because it's, it, it's surprising us every single day, but disruption is part of it's just part of tech industry life. There's always yep. something new. There's always something big. Maybe not something this big for a while. Yep. Um, but what can we learn from history repeating itself? Like what patterns do we usually see when something like this hits? Yes, I think there are clear patterns, not only um, related to um, you know history and technology, but really us as humans, right, and our uh, ability or inability to process uncertainty, right. Mm -hmm. And I think. Uh, one thing that holds true from, you know, the last century is that any time that we have technological disruption, we have a, a, a mix of excitement, right, and uh, fear and concern. Yet, uh, time and time again, you know, we've seen this in the agricultural revolution, industrial revolution, in the early internet days and the digital revolution, right? These um, revolutions in in the net, net right, end up resulting in productivity gains, uh, economic growth, and overall prosperity. So even though um, for sure we can anticipate uh, disruptions and displacements right in, in the marketplace and shifts, uh, we can also anticipate a lot of opportunities in growth as a result of um, this AI mm -hmm. transformation and, and revolution that's uh, 
currently just getting started, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I, I think for for us at Iron Hack in the in the education space, there's this there's this balance for us of empathizing with people's uncertainty whilst not giving into the doom and gloom and the fear. It's like a balance of, okay, we, we need to, there's clearly some things to think through um, and there's things that we have to work on, problems that we have to solve, challenges to overcome. But at the same time, it's just so exciting. Like the potential of this technology yeah. is enormous. Listen, we've, we've been, um, we're proud to have been operating now for over a decade, right? And, and in those 10 years, we've seen time and time and time again that change is a constant, right? And, and human beings, in in the industries and companies created by human beings are create are incredibly adaptive and creative in adjusting to shifts in the market shifts due to innovation and technology right so we we've been there before right and i don't think this time is uh any different mm -hmm. is that like if you don't like like if you don't like heat get out of the kitchen if you don't like change get out of the tech industry get out of tech for sure <laughs> absolutely yeah. So from a job hunting perspective, because I know the vast majority of people in our community are either people wanting to break into tech or freshly broken into tech. Uh, from a job hunting perspective, what do you think is AI's impact on the job market? What should people hoping to break into tech know? Yeah. So as I said, we're, we're just getting started, right? So the first thing that we can anticipate is a lot of change. In, in the pace and velocity of change is... Um, getting faster you know, i remember lead, uh, reading a book uh, maybe 10 years ago uh, from peter diamandis uh, called abundance right and one of the themes of the book was that we're hitting an inflection point in terms of the pace of innovation right and and we're going to see all these uh breakthrough technologies build on top of each other right and in the the level of change will increase dramatically in the next couple of years so it's uh safe to assume that the roles of the past decade are likely to be different and will continue to evolve in the coming uh, decades. And I'm, um, you know, sad or excited to share, right, that I think all industries will be impacted by these changes, right? Uh, some roles more than others, right? But I can't think of one industry where uh, change will not come into uh, play due to these uh, transformations, right? What I'll say in terms of um, state of mind, right, and approach to these type of situations is quite frankly something that we've been saying as an organization and to our students of the community for, for over 10 years now, which is um, embrace lifelong learning, right? Uh, I don't care if you think you know everything that it, there is to know about uh, programming or data science. It is pivotal. It is crucial that you continue to stay abreast of what's happening in the market, right? And uh, AI is certainly no exception, right? So I'm really encouraging everybody, regardless of your career track or, or your personal interests, to really uh, get to know a little bit more about the foundations of AI, some of the applications, and to actually play with the tools and the technologies yourself, right? Because um, that ability to keep learning, right, and keep tinkering with these uh, groundbreaking technologies will allow you to um, move at the at the pace, if not faster, than the marketplace, and and really stay competitive wherever um, the market will go, right? Which is really hard to predict, but that ability to um, to constantly educate ourselves, right, and learn fast will be uh, a key determinant factor in succeeding in this uh, dynamic economy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. One of, one of the things that I'm the most excited about with AI is how, as you said, it's every industry is impacted. Uh, but more than every industry, it's also every single role, like even the non-technical roles. So you can really, if, if you're interested in AI, you can get into it like in the shallow end of the AI pool, or yeah. you can dive into the deep end, like whether you want to be the person training machine learning models or you're a digital marketer using ChatGPT to make your life easier. Like there's so much variety and so much range. And I know that's something that we talk about a lot with our courses and just about tech in general 
is the diversity of the roles and the things that you can do. And I, would you say that the same is for AI? Like it, it touches everything at every level. Totally. How, how, are you using AI um, regularly? Yeah, I've had the ops manager message me about it. Like you're running out of credits. I'm okay, like, oh, okay. sorry. So yeah, I'm I'm using it pretty regularly. And one of the things I'm using it for is for search more than anything yeah. because when I'm looking for very specific data points, I can do it. The it, it's so weird to think of it as the old way of going onto Google and typing in the keywords that I think might be right and scrolling through articles and hoping to find what I want. Or I can go into uh, OpenAI and say, give me data points on the demand for DevOps jobs in the US. Give it to me in easy bullet points. And it gives me exactly what I'm looking for. And it cites the source. And it cuts down my research time by hours, hours a week. That's so incredible. I mean, it's, it's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah, no, it's, it's remarkable how, you know, in the case of uh, ChatGPT and, and OpenAI, in a year, it's uh, earned a very important place on my desktop, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you know, 12 months ago, I was using, if I was on a remote call, you know, I had you on the screen, right? Uh, and maybe like one or two web browsers to, you know, track my calendar and maybe do some on the spot uh, research. But I'd say, um, you know, right now I'm looking at um, a, an open window with Chad GPT, right? So uh, anyway. Yeah, I do. Uh, this is just tech nerds getting, <laughs> getting into yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Right I do sometimes, I find myself making a point of saying please and thank you to ChatGPT, you know, like just in case. Like if it becomes, my, if it becomes my own know. lord, like I want it to know that I'm polite. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, exactly. Um, so well, while, while we're nerding out, uh, what do you think will be the next big advancements in AI? Like what are some of the things you're the most excited about this tech being able to do? Yeah, um, so th there's a lot coming live, right? And we're seeing it pretty much every every hour, as as you mentioned before. Um, you know, personally, I'm very excited about more opportunities to um, seamlessly integrate our data, right, uh, into into the model, right, and have more personalized and uh, valuable recommendations based on more comp a 360 more comprehensive perspective of who you are um, at work personally uh, depending on your uh, preferences and your comfort sharing that data right with with the model right um, you can almost envision right let's say at work right connecting and you can do this right now with uh, enterprise licenses and and uh, a little bit more comprehensive architecture building, right? But that process can can take a while, in some cases months um, to achieve, right? But I can imagine connecting, you know, 10 different APIs, right? Where uh, I connect OpenAI or any language learning model, right? To our, our CRM, you know, to our Google da Analytics dashboard, right? To our, uh, you know, learning management system, right, to our ERP and to our accounting software, right, in a matter of a couple clicks, right, a couple integrations, I have full 360 integration. I can ask uh, queries and do prompts that give me uh, a good view, right, and can make cross analysis across uh, these different data sources, right? And, you know, a lot of folks talk about that uh, importance of building a solid AI core, right? And then once you have that AI core, you can really unlock the full potential of the technology, right? And the same is true about um, stuff on the personal side, right? Like in my case, you know, maybe I can share uh, some information about, you know, my personal spending habits, right? Or my um, nutrition and workout regimen, right? And, and get more uh personalized recommendations on how to better how to be more effective working out or what foods to eat right and even in some cases i think uh combining those two worlds right the professional and the personal and having uh personalized learning recommendations mm. right so i think um the more the machine right and in the gen ai has the capability 
to um, tap into other data sources, right? In, in some case, live data sources, the more um, relevant and personalized um, those recommendations will be, right? Even uh, something crazy as, let's say, connecting your uh, your Google Drive, right? And, and having a good sense of how you write, right? In your style, right? And then, you know, producing emails and copy that are more personalized to your, to your own, um, style right and syntax and in personality right so um i'm really more excited about that next frontier of practical application of what i think is already a very powerful tool mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's something i'm looking forward to as well just in terms of content because it, it's something that i've had a lot of conversations with people about is when you get content fatigue where there's just so much out there and like you mentioned uh like nutrition um and healthy living there's so much information out there that when we look for it ourselves it can be overwhelming so having something that uh like tech that knows you and is able to yeah. give you more personalized recommendations it just sort of streamlines this massive information that our neanderthal brains aren't used to having access to totally. and it can just make things a little bit less overwhelming perhaps totally and listen i have you know i have a premium license and i highly recommend everybody to get it for you know 20 bucks a month i think the the roi is certainly there uh but i find myself oftentimes um you know copy and pasting from different sources or um or sometimes like the uploading of csvs and files is not um com completely clean and, and effective so i think we still have a little bit of work to do right to get to um uh, the seamless integration right that in a, in a matter of minutes uh produces a lot of value for the end user mm -hmm. is when we start building those ai product ecosystems that things are going to get really exciting yeah. um, so while we're talking about the potential of tech there's another sort of hot issue uh, when we're talking about the potentials of this new technology. And that's, of course, uh, the uh, ethical concerns around it. Um, so there's there's often this conversation, and I think it comes from, it comes from a very real place, but it also maybe yeah. comes from that dramatic side of us that yeah. likes to imagine the worst case scenario of, what if this tech falls into the wrong hands? Uh, and of course, we're seeing uh, things that could potentially be concerning, like deep fakes making their way into newspapers, just things like that. So how can we as tech professionals sort of navigate these uncharted waters and how do we handle uh, conversations about ethics in AI? Yeah, uh, so listen, I'll, I'll first disclaimer is I'm not um, an expert on AI ethics, right? But I think it's a very important area and field of study. And we really wanna make sure that uh, this technology, like any technology, is to the benefit of mankind, mm -hmm. right? And, and it's such a powerful, uh, technology that can be used in uh, both uh, good and bad ways that I think it's an important topic that we should all be discussing. Um, second thing, it's certainly a very complex, multifaceted, uh, multi-stakeholder uh, area, right? That's going to require the uh, collaboration across um, areas, sectors of society, but, you know, uh, Policymakers, uh, business leaders, right? the end user, right? Um, but you know, I think couple couple ideas that I'll share. Um, one, I think it's important that anyone who is designing and building these uh, technologies is is a student of the ethical topics, right? and it has a um, clear sense of what are the ethical applications, whether it's the ethical use of um, data, right? In, in what are the, the gray areas, right? That we need to, to be aware of. Uh, secondly, I see a lot of value in building transparent and open models. Uh, I understand that not everything that will be built will be um will be open right but i think to the extent that we can be more open right um open source right or just more transparent with how these models are built right and where's the data coming from right uh what are the um assumptions that are made right it's it's a benefit of everybody right mm -hmm. and 
Um, finally, I think it's really important that end users in society in general is uh, is well informed, right? So we can hold um, all the stakeholders accountable, right? Challenge. And we can't do that unless we have the knowledge, right? And the understanding, the foundational knowledge and understanding to um, to challenge and to question and, 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 and to suggest. Yeah, so I think that there's, uh, like we were saying, there's some parallels between the adoption of AI and the adoption of the internet, where maybe when it was first being built, it was something that only the experts were talking about or only people in tech were talking about. But now it's become something that everyone uses on a daily basis. Uh, some of us too much, like myself. Um, yeah. So it's something that we're all... Um, we're all uh, allowed to have an opinion on because it's something that we all use and it's something that we're all educated on. So I'm my hope is that by the time I'm 80, my grandchildren are explaining AI tools to me the way that I have to explain Facebook to my uh, grandma. <laughs> I'm sure that will happen. Sure that will happen. Um, so without revealing too much, uh, if we can cast our eyes into the very near future, uh, how uh, how is Iron Hack? tackling the rise of AI and how are we bringing the tools and the skills to our future students and our current students? Yeah, so in general, anytime that we see a, a shift in the marketplace, we need to adapt in order to make sure that our offerings are uh, the most compelling to, to learners, right? In the companies that are hiring our, our graduates, right? And folks from our, from our community. So, I'd say we will do four things in the next six to 12 months. Uh, some are already uh, underway and maybe even live on our website. Uh, others are, are work in progress. The first is um, integrating AI concepts and tooling into all of our existing boot camps, whether that is uh, web development or UX, UI, or data analytics, every bootcamp will have modules and, and tools that are um, from the AI world, right? To ensure that we multiply the output and the productivity of folks on that track, right? And on that um, skill set, right? Uh, second thing will be integrating AI into our learning platforms, right? So that the delivery of the class, again, won't be entirely replaced uh, by computers, right, or AI, uh, but we'll give additional tools to learner to supplement the learning instructors, the learning community, their peers, right, and learn uh, faster in a more personalized way. Personalized way. Um, third, we will roll out new um, AI-centric and specific boot camps. Uh, I think we're already enrolling for our uh, newest edition, the machine learning uh, boot camp, which we're super, super excited about. And there's more to come in uh, in the weeks and in, in months um, coming, right? And, and finally, I think you're going to start seeing other types of courses uh, a lot shorter than our uh, historical offerings. Uh, courses with a number of different audiences in mind that want to learn about AI, but don't necessarily want to commit to a you know 400 hour boot camp, and don't necessarily need to career shift or enter break into tech, but they realize the power of these technologies, and they want to make sure that they have a foundational knowledge and understanding to be more productive and more competitive in their day to day. Mm -hmm. it, it's so difficult not to talk about it before it's time. I feel like this is how Marvel actors feel when they're like they've made the movie and they've got all the spoilers and they can't say anything uh, before it's time. But yeah, it's it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, uh, so we're coming up to the end of our time. Unfortunately, we've got time for just one more uh, rapid fire question. So imagine you and I are in an elevator and you overhear me saying to someone. Yeah, I want to break into tech. I want to get my first tech job, but I just don't think that I need AI skills. Like, I just don't think it's necessary. You've got thirty seconds to change my mind. 
what would you say well the ele elevator pitch yeah all righty well um ellie i'd say um ai is taking the world by storm and to use the same uh, reference to another industry it will be uh if not as big bigger than the internet so by learning ai skills you will be able to future proof your career maximize your earning potential in this new economy and work on the most impactful exciting and innovative projects of the next decades to come so dive away that's a pretty good elevator pitch you should be yeah. a ceo or something <laughs> <laughs> well ariel it's, it's been an absolute joy this has been so much fun i could wrap it on for ages but unfortunately that is our time so well thank you everyone for joining us we hope you got as much out of that out as i did and ariel thank you so much thank, thank you, you ali and thank you everybody for joining us it's a pleasure thanks everyone see you all, all right. soon bye take care